Isn't that the place where those children? That's right, sir. The Long Ridge Farm case. Three children. That's the reference. The Corrigans. Two Three. boys and a girl. Brought before the court as in need of care and protection. The home was found for them with Mr. and Mrs. Tanning at Long Ridge Farm. One of the children subsequently died as a result of criminal neglect and persistent ill treatment. In fact, the case made a bit of a sensation at the time. Oh, it was horrible. The standing was sentenced to terms of imprisonment. But standing died in prison. Mrs. Standing, on the other hand, served the sentence and was duly released. <coughs> Yesterday, as I said, she was found strangled at 24 Cowboy Street. Who did it? I'm coming to that matter. Now, near the scene of the crime, we found a notebook. In that notebook was written two addresses. One was obviously 24 Calder Street. And the other was Monkswell Man. What? That's right, sir. That is why Superintendent Hotbed, on getting this information from Scotland Yard, thought it imperative for me to come out here and find out if you knew any connection between this house or anyone in this house for that matter and the Long Ridge Farm case. No, of course not. It must have been a coincidence. Mr. Ralston, the superintendent doesn't think it's a coincidence, sir. He'd have come himself if it was in any way possible. But under the weather conditions, and as I can ski, he sent me down instead, with instructions to get full particulars of everyone, each and every one in the house, and to report back to him by phone, <coughs> and to take what measures are thought fit to ensure the safety of this household. Safety? What danger does he think we are in? Surely he's not suggesting that one of us is going to be killed in here. Mr. Austin, I don't want to frighten any of the ladies, but frankly, yes, that is the idea. Why? That's what I'm here to find out. But the whole thing's so crazy. Yes, sir, it's because it's crazy that is dangerous. Oh, but it's nonsense. I must say it seems a bit far-fetched. <laughs> oh, I think it's wonderful. <laughs> Oh, yes, Mr. Ralston. Now, below those two addresses that we found in the notebook was written, three blind mice. And on the dead woman's body, we found a piece of paper with, this is the first, written on it. And below those words was a drawing of three little mice. And a bar of music. The music was the tune of three blind mice. You know how it goes. Three blind mice. You said there were three children and one of them died. Yes, sir, the youngest, the boy who lived. What happened to the other two? See, the girl was adopted by someone, but we haven't been able to trace her present whereabouts. <coughs> the elder boy would now be about, uh, say, 25, <coughs> deserted from the army, and I've not been heard of since. Now, according to the army, psychologist was definitely schizophrenic. We had the head. And they think it was he who killed Mrs. Keon and Mrs. Stanley? That's right, ma'am. He's a homicide maniac, and he's going to turn up here and try to kill someone here. But why? That's what I've got to find out from you. Now, as the superintendent sees it, there must be some connection for this. Now, Mr. Austin, you state, sir, that you yourself have never had any connection with the Long Ridge Farm case? No. And the same goes for you, madam? What about servants? Oh, servants. Oh, we don't have any. <laughs> um, that reminds us, Sergeant. I need to go to the kitchen. I'll be there if you want to. That's all right, Mr. Ross. Now, can I have all your names, please, one by one? Really, Sergeant, this is ridiculous. I mean, we are living here in a kind of hotel. We all arrived here yesterday. <coughs> we have nothing to do with this place. Madam, you plan to come here in advance, though. You booked your rooms here ahead of you. Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Uh, Palavicini, uh, my car overturned in a snow drift. I see. Now, madam, what I'm trying to get at is that anyone who's been following you around might very well have known all along that you've been planning to come here. You get me? Now, there's basically one thing I want to know, and I want to know this quick. 
rich one of you is it that has some connection with the non rich families? <coughs>
I wonder. It may have been cut. Cut? Mr. Ralston. How should you know that? They have been cut. Who should have cut them? Just how much? Tell me, how much do you know about these people staying at your guest house? <coughs> oh. We really know nothing about them. Mm. Mrs. Boyle wrote from a Bournemouth hotel. Major Metcalf wrote from an address in, where was it? Um, Leamington. Leamington. Uh, Christopher Wren wrote from Hampstead and that Casewell woman from a private hotel in New City. <coughs> and Mr. Palavich, as you know where I got to do last night. Anyway, I mean, you must have your ration books and that sort of thing. You know, Mr. Rawson, I should go into all that, of course. But there's not much reliance to be placed on that sort of evidence. Even if you think that this, this maniac is going to turn up here and try to kill one of us, or all of us, we must be quite safe now. Because of the snow, no one can get here till that well. <coughs> Unless... Unless he's here already. Here already? Why not, Mr. Ralston? Think about it. All these people arrived at your guest house yesterday evening. Some hours after the murder of Mrs. Kelly. <coughs> Plenty of time to get here. Yes, yes, yes. But apart from Mr. Palavicini, all these people were booked in advance. Why not, Mr. Ralston? These crimes were planned. Crimes? There's just been one crime at 24 Culver Street. Why are you so sure that there will be another one here? See, that it will happen here, no. I hope to prevent that. But it will be attempted. Yes, I'm sure of that. I can't believe it. It's so fantastic. It isn't fantastic, Mr. Ralston. It's just fact. Do you have a description of what this man in London looked like? Medium height. Indeterminate build. Darkish overcoat. Soft felt hat. <coughs> This is my mother. Spoke in a whisper. There were three darkish overcoats hanging in the hall right now. One of them was yours, Mr. Ralston. Yes. There are three soft felt hats, too. I still can't believe it. You see, it's this telephone wire that worries me. You know, if it has been cut. If, if, if you'll excuse me, please, I need to go to the kitchen. It's quite all right, Mr. Ralston. Thank you. Do you have an extension? Mr. Ralston. Mr. Ralston! I beg your pardon, did you say something? Yes, I said, do you have an extension? Yes, in our bedroom upstairs. Go and try not that for me, will you? Yes, of course. Thank you. <coughs>